What's good, everyone? This is Raw Truth Media giving you the raw content that you deserve to need. Please like and share this video throughout all social media platforms. So here's Coach Maynard talking about his recent loss against Jackson State. He sounds pretty humble. But in, on a real, I believe this losing season will be a learning lesson for him. And I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama a and has a better season next year than this year. But the first step for him is to get players to buy in. Not just to get talented players, just to get them. But to get the right type of athletes that buys into the system and the culture. But here's what he had to say. Again, just a quick update. If you do have any questions for our coaches, you raise your hand, fit you to get your question in the queue for our coaches. Please wait till you're called upon prior to asking your question. And please leave your lines muted unless you're actively asking questions for our coaches. With that being said, happy to be joined by Alabama a and head coach Connell Maynard. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Coach Maynard, as always, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule to join us. If you could please start us out with an opening statement regarding your team's most recent outing versus Jackson State. Yeah, we went down to Mobile, played in the Gulf Coast Challenge, and um, uh, it was a great atmosphere. The, the um, Gulf Coast Challenge did a great job of presenting and putting on and taking care of both teams. And, um it was a good football game. Uh, we got off to a good start. We was up three zip and uh, and had a chance to up that lead. And uh, we dropped the snap on uh, the extra point, and uh, they blocked it. Uh, and it kind of stayed that way for a while. And then um, it was uh, they scored, made it seven to three. Uh, then we scored, made it ten to seven. Um, and they stayed that way until middle of the second quarter, and they they scored again, made it fourteen to ten, and we got the ball back and uh, got stopped. They got it back with maybe thirty seconds or forty seconds, and uh, it was, four, it was uh, ten seconds left in the half from the forty yard line. And they were able to get behind our defense in some kind of way and score a touchdown with uh, just ten seconds on the clock when the play started. So that was a big play in the game. That, Pushed the score be twenty one to ten going into halftime instead of fourteen to ten at halftime. Um, so Blues playing hard, playing well. Uh, just made a couple mistakes early, and then in the third quarter they came out and scored the first possession and uh, made it twenty eight to ten. And then we scored a field goal, and uh, we was able to stop them from scoring the rest of the way. Uh, and we had a lot of chances, we had a lot of opportunities, um, and we just didn't cash in on. Uh, to make it a one possession game. And, uh, we got stopped on downs one time and we mis had miscued on a couple passes in the end zone. So uh, the defense played great, gave us opportunities, and uh, we just didn't take advantage of it. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. First question goes to Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Man. Good morning, Doc. How you doing? Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Got a chance to watch the game. So talk a little bit more. You said about the defense playing special teams in some areas were uh, good at, uh, also. But talk to the guys that stood out on the defensive side of the ball uh, that kept you in the game ways all the way through, giving you opportunities uh, to try to push through and make even more of it. Right. I thought the D-line played well. Zarian Hayes always lead, lead those guys and um, – uh, get pressure on uh, Jadur and uh, kind of containing the running game. Uh, the linebackers, Terry uh, and Hester, always played well. Um, and then secondary, uh, those guys was uh, making tackles and uh, not giving up big plays until, of course, right before the end of the half. So uh, they were doing the things that we needed to do. We were trying to confuse him, trying not to give him the short, easy throws. And uh, keep him off balance, put some pressure on him every now and then, uh, because he's too good of a quarterback to just sit back and uh, let him pick you apart. Now, uh, if you just give him a little short throw, he's gonna take it right now. And uh, we didn't want to just let him do that, uh, so we want to kind of force him to throw the ball down the field and, and run the ball. Your next matchup is against Texas Southern at home. Uh, last home game for you, so you seen your night and that approach, but about your experience, obviously as a player, um, uh, winning championship, 
uh, at the Division II level as a coach, also at the uh, multiple conference experience. Talk to me a little bit about uh, the confidence of a team and how that works uh, as you kind of get rolling. You know a lot of teams have good players, but to be able to put that together, what is your experience that really allows the team, once they get the rolling, just uh, moving back and forth with players and everybody's on the same page to see on the outside a lot of times is that magic of a team feeling confident no matter that they're able to push forward. How does that come together from your experience looking at that? Um, it's really the key is uh, for those guys to believe. And uh, once the once the guys start believing, uh, it's it's hard to be the it's hard to be the good football team that believe they the best and believe they're gonna win the game, uh, no matter what. Uh, keep fighting back, especially those teams you see that get down seven, they come right back to score and and tie the game up, or somebody score a touchdown, tie the game up with them, they go right back down and score and take the lead back. Um, and and it's all about confidence, it's all about believing, it's all about buying in. And when you can get off to a good start. Uh, 3-0, and 4-0, 5-1. You get up to a start like that, your team is bought in. They listen to everything that you're telling them and trying to coach you and get them to do. And uh, because they believe now, because they they see that the, the uh, proof is in the pudding. So they buy in, they play hard. And uh, that's how you get those good teams to continue to win because they believe they can win. And, uh, and this is the same with the teams that don't win. You know, as soon as they get down 10 points, they say, okay, here we go again. You know, but we don't. We 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 starting to do what we always do. You know, and, uh, and they start pulling fingers and things of that nature. So it, it's all about your confidence, believing in, in your your system, your coaches, and your teammates. And when they do that, when they believe, uh, you know, you can do a lot of things. Like you know, just take my team for example. This week, we believe we was going to win the football game. We believe we could win the football game, and we went out and played that way. And we gave our chance. We gave ourselves a chance. You know, we gave our t- opportunity. We need one more score to really make it a one point, one possession game, but it was two two possession game. And uh, we we really felt like we was going to score and cut it to one. And we we thought we could win the football game. And guys play like it. And so that's the difference. Thank you, Coach uh, Andrew. I have time for one follow up question. Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, Coach Maynard, uh, follow up question in, in terms of that is. As you close up the season, when do you start reviewing everything in terms of of how you plan to move forward with with the with your program? Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go back and self scout and uh, see where we were strong, where we was weak, what we need to improve at, what what positions, and then um, uh, we'll hit the road and, and get those positions and get those spots filled, and we understand what we need to work on uh, and what positions what we need people at, and so. When we go out there, quarterback, we go out there, do we go out there? We know we need a guy that can throw the ball, or maybe a guy with a little bit better runner or offensive lineman. Um, you know, do we need the guard position? Do we need the tackle position? Secondary, same thing. Do we need a safety that's going to hit? We can move this guy to the corner, uh, things of that nature. So we just self evaluate positions and uh, uh, what we did this year, and we're going to attack our weaknesses. Thank you, coach. Yes, Good luck sir. this weekend. Look forward yep. to the match. Thank you. This is Charles Bishop. Good morning, Coach Marion. How are you doing? Good morning, Charles. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I wanted to ask a quick question uh, in regards to the weather conditions down there in Mobile. Uh, did that affect play calling uh, in terms of the direction uh, that your offense uh, might have been going? Because it seemed as though uh, the wind had an effect on, uh, on, on some passes. Uh, no, it was uh, – the wind was going pretty good uh, – from my right to left and their opposite left to right. So, um, no, the only thing it really affected is the kicking game. Um, you know, when you try to tip a field goal or kickoffs, you know, you can get it all the way in the end zone or out of the end zone and vice versa. And the punts, that's the first thing I told the guys was on the punts, when they're punting into that win, we have to be ready for a Peter call to get away from the ball because it's probably not going to be a good punt and it can easily hit off of you and they may be able to get the ball. So that was the first alert that I gave our guys. When they're putting into that win, we have to be ready for that. But play call, it don't really affect the play call. The only thing you want to tell a quarterback in that situation, if the wind is blowing to your back, 
when you throw those balls out to the sideline, it's going to take it forward a little bit, whichever way it's blowing. It's going to move it a, ball, a yard or two. And I saw that happen a couple of times on uh, both quarterbacks. We're trying to throw the ball straight to the sideline, and the wind took it out in front of the guys. So that's that's it. It, it don't really change the play calls, though. Good thing. Appreciate it, Coach. Yes, sir.